Hi, I'm Ryan Hill, Senior in Sport Management at North Carolina State University. Today I'll be analyzing the recent NCAA conference realignment. Conference realignment is when many institutions change their conference membership in a one to three year period, drastically changing the landscape of intercollegiate athletics. Like anything, there's the good and the bad. Instead of better competition, many believe that conference realignment is simply driven by revenue. Conference realignment is driven by television rights. Networks like ESPN, CBS, and Fox pay large amounts of money for the right to broadcast games. The networks get advertising power, the conferences receive the money and exposure. How much are conferences being paid? The Pac-12 leads the way, receiving $255 million per year from ESPN. The SEC receives $210 million per year from its two deals with ESPN and CBS. The money from the conference TV deals is distributed evenly among the member institutions, and with athletic department budgets increasing at an alarming rate, the fight for millions of dollars has become imperative. The latest conference realignment was sparked at the University of Texas, where AD Delos Dodds started the Longhorn Network with ESPN. The Longhorn Network shows exclusively University of Texas athletics and pays the university $15 million per year. This did not sit well with the other Big 12 institutions, who saw the deal with ESPN as unfair. Meanwhile, Pac-10 Commissioner Larry Scott was looking to expand to 12 teams. Scott was the first to make moves for realignment by convincing Colorado to lead the Big 12 and join Utah to make the Pac-12. Colorado eagerly jumped at the chance to see Pac-12 revenue sharing and get out of the shadow of the Longhorn Network. The series of events that took place from there until 2012 was realignment madness. See if you can keep up with this. Texas A&M and Missouri moved to the SEC. Nebraska fled to the Big Ten, TCU moved to the Big East, Syracuse and Pittsburgh to the ACC, TCU moved again to the Big 12, West Virginia's move to the Big 12 involved a $20 million payout and an intense lobbying battle between West Virginia and Kentucky Senators, and finally the Big East showed complete desperation by adding Boise State, San Diego State, SMU, and Houston. Conferences did not necessarily evaluate a school by its athletic success but rather the market it was associated with. The Pac-12 won Colorado because of the 2.2 million households in Colorado, not the Buffalo's 5-7 and seven football record. The SEC added Missouri and Texas A&M for the much-needed Texas market and the 2.7 million households in Missouri, not their combined 15-11 and 11 football records. Conference realignment is a way to generate more money for the institutions and athletic departments. Revenue from football and television deals is essential to financing non-revenue sports, which are becoming more competitive. Increased marketing and visibility for the conferences and their member institutions. Increased visibility can translate to more applications, justification for higher tuition fees, and a positive image of schools through marketing techniques. A study in 2010 analyzed past realignments. The results indicated that schools who changed conferences enjoyed increase in attendance. This is significant in that football on average accounts for 43% of athletic department revenue. Realignment can be justified athletically as well as financially. BCS juggernaut Boise State can now face opponents in the Big East that are comparable and thus increase the opportunity for competitive play. Many institutions that choose to leave are entering more competitive conferences and offer new challenges to their student athletes. Unfortunately, the constant search for revenue streams may be placing too much emphasis on athletics and less on student-athletes. Conferences are no longer using geographic location as criteria. This puts the burden on student-athletes who experience excessive traveling and time away from school. Conference realignment is not friendly to longtime fans. A study by Baylor University found that 76% of college football fans would be disappointed if historical regional conference rivalries started to diminish. All the power and decision-making ability is being held by few people. The relatively few conference commissioners, athletic directors, and advertisers are making decisions that affect millions of American consumers and student-athletes that have no say in the process. Lastly, conference realignment naturally lends itself to causing disparity among the conferences. If all the big money and big markets move to four or five conferences, then the remaining conferences will suffer causing collegiate athletics as a whole to be less effective.